Hello everyone, in this Hilding Shorts, I am going to tell you about membranous nephropathy where you can see there are two types, primary idiopathic which is the most common type, secondary is due to various reasons like drugs, NSAIDs, infections. In infections, you have to remember these two, hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Hepatitis B, what is the most common association in pediatric age group will be the membranous and in adult it will be MPGN. But if examiner asks you overall, it is membranous, which is most commonly associated with hepatitis B. When we talk about hepatitis C infection, cryoglobulinemia is most common, then membranous, then MPGN type 1. Right. Membranous glomerulonephropathy secondary causes infections and malignancies. Remember, infections and malignancies are two important ones. Infections, syphilis and schistosomiosis are most commonly associated with membranous. During malignancies, you have to remember it is solid cancer like a cancer colon and breast. So malignancies are also most commonly associated with membranous glomerulonephropathy. When we talk about pathogenesis, pathogenesis of uh, membranous is associated with megalin antigen. Megalin antigen is a proximal tubule antigen which was the experimental model in the mouse and this was called as Heyman's nephritis. In human being, corresponding to the megalin antigen was phospholipase A2 receptor. Right? And there is a new thing which has been added in Robbins, THSD7A. These two things, phospholipase A2 receptor and THSD7A, they are biomarker of membranous disease activity also. Pathogenesis is immune complex mediated. So what will happen? Cytokine will be released. What they will do? They will cause bone, uh, basement membrane damage and visceral epithelial cell damage. Because of basement membrane damage, you will see thickening but no rupture. Remember, you can see there is no rupture, only there is a thickening because of immune complex deposition. And visceral epithelial cell damage, you are going to see effacement of the podocyte. So food processes are lost here. So this is called effacement of podocyte, right? So these are the pathogenesis because of the immune complex on light microscopy electron microscopy and immunofluorescence microscopy you will see uh, capillary basement membrane thickening on uh, immunofluorescence microscopy granular immunofluorescence because of the immune complexes and on electron microscopy you will see epimembranous deposit which is sub epithelial deposit basement membrane thickening but no rupture podocyte effacement as i have shown you and a spike and dome appearance so here you can see Immunofluorescence, granular appearance, right? So these are these are having uh, you know yellow and green granule, granule things are present in the capillary. These are the granular immunofluorescence because of immune complexes. On electron microscopy, you can see these are the pink immune complexes, and in between the green color, you can see this is the basement membrane. So this basement membrane is forming a spike. Immune complexes are forming dome. So this is called as a spike and dome appearance, right? So you can see in this picture also I have shown, shown you antibodies are formed against phospholipase A2 receptor and this is going to form the immune complexes right so immune complexes are like a dome and in between basement membrane is like a spike right but remember a spike and dome best seen by light microscopy with a special stain like a pass and silver so on pass staining you can see all the red color things are the basement membrane so basement membrane is red in appearance silver staining they are looking black in color and you can notice that a spike and dome is more uh, clearly seen in this staining so enjoy learning best